Yeah, good morning and uh, welcome everyone. Yeah, we'll just uh, continue on our study of uh, the supernatural and uh, you know how we can flow in it. So we'll pray first and then we will get into our uh, subject for today. I'll pray. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you, Lord, for your goodness in our lives. And uh, Lord, we thank you for your word, um, which is, Lord, every single day helping us to know you more, um, to grow in you, O oh God, and Lord, to be changed by you, Father. Lord, as we spend time in your word this uh, afternoon, we pray that Lord, it will uh, really open up to us, O oh God, a world of possibilities and uh, help us, Lord, to step out of the familiar and the comfortable uh, into uh, into even the unknown, unknown Lord, so that uh, we can trust you to do many miracles, Lord, and we can witness, Lord, that uh, you're such a great God, such a mighty and awesome God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this time. Thank you for uh, this theme of the supernatural and, uh, Lord, the class. Uh, I just speak a blessing upon uh, every single one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. So we uh, talked about the renewed mind and how uh, when we have the mind of Christ, uh, we can have that understanding that you know, what God wants to do. Otherwise, if we are limited with our own natural understanding, then uh, there are so many things that we miss out on. Today, we'll um, skip to the next theme for the supernatural, which is to understand the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so this is a very uh, loved subject in Christianity, in Christian circles, to learn about the anointing uh, and how the Spirit of God works by the power of the anointing. So what is the uh, anointing? That's the first question before we discuss about the anointing. What is the anointing? How could we define it? We use it a lot, no? Anointing. So, what is it? What is it? Yes, very good. Yeah, so that's an associated word. So, the carrying of the presence, the presence of the Holy Spirit is, uh, we could say anointing, but usually we, we describe it as the, the, uh, the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. That is the anointing. Okay, the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. So there are a couple of scriptures that help us understand that uh, the anointing is both already existent within us, but uh, it also comes upon us. So two different ways of looking at the anointing. One is it exists within us as believers. The second is it comes on us. So one is internal, the other is sort of external. It comes on us. So when we look at the passage from 1 John chapter 2, verses 20, and then we will read verse 27. Uh, someone will need to read it out for us to discuss it further. Yeah, verse 20 and then verse 27, two verses. 1 John chapter 2, verse 20. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The latter end of the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry, that's what sorry. I'm wondering about. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. No, 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 1 John chapter 2, verse 20. Yeah. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, Correct. and you know all things. In verse 27, but the anointing which you have received from him uh, abides in you, and you do not need that anyone to teach you. Mm -hmm. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true and is not a lie, and just mm -hmm. as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Okay. So here, uh, Apostle John is referring to an anointing from the Holy One, which is in us. OK, 
okay so the anointing from the holy one uh, which is in us is nothing but the presence of the holy spirit because when we are born again the holy spirit comes to dwell inside every believer so it's it's not uh, anything unique to a believer to have the holy spirit it's normal okay so here apostle john is saying that this is an anointing the anointing which you have received from him or god abides in you abides is stays in you so the power and the presence of the holy spirit that stays in us is actually the holy spirit staying in us that is why he can even make this statement this we can this is normal like we understand this and then he also says uh, he talks about a few functions of the holy spirit so the anointing within what is one of the primary functions of the presence of the holy spirit in us to guide us to teach us that's why he says the anointing it abides in you you do not need that anyone teach you but as the same anointing teaches you meaning the holy spirit guides you the holy spirit leads you the holy spirit uh, uh, shows you which way you need to go in uh, and so basically he's only referring to the indwelling presence of the holy spirit that leads a believer so this is a normal function of the holy spirit in every believer's life but we all know that there is another experience of the holy spirit that we need to have which is the baptism in the holy spirit okay so uh, we've learned about this in other courses so i'm not going to spend much time on it even though we are a believer like acts chapter 19 uh, paul goes to this place known as ephesus and over there he asks the disciples you know uh, do you have you heard of the holy spirit disciples are saying oh we've not even heard about the holy spirit so though they are disciples they did not know about this experience of the baptism in the holy spirit then he kind of teaches them uh, he, they didn't even know about water baptism so he teaches them and they are baptized in water next is he prays for them lays hands and prays for them they receive the baptism in the holy spirit okay so having the holy spirit in us yes that is an anointing uh, and that anointing will guide us and lead us but there are so many other things uh which will happen by the empowering of the holy spirit through the baptism in the holy spirit okay which is what we must look for so today when we talk about the anointing uh we will talk more in the context of the holy spirit holy spirit baptism empowering from outside got it uh, so that is the context in which we will speak more about the anointing even jesus in his ministry he um before he started his ministry he quoted in the synagogue uh, the passage from isaiah 61 do you remember he says the spirit of the lord is upon me uh, upon me he has anointed me and then he lists out to preach the good news to the poor to set the captives free uh, and you know uh, all those things he lists out but how is he going to do all those mighty works by whom is he going to do those mighty works yeah so in luke 4 when he stands in the synagogue that's what he's affirming he's saying the spirit of the lord is upon me so when we talk about ministry where we want to see the power of the spirit we need the anointing upon us anointing is in us it guides us great but we need the anointing upon us the way it was on jesus so that we can do all these amazing things you know healings miracles so the presence the power and the presence of the holy spirit on us is the anointing that we carry to release the miracles to release the healings so how do we how do we receive this anointing we already said receive the baptism in the holy spirit that's the first step okay now how to continue to keep it powerful the power and the presence of the holy spirit on our lives um as we live every day plus when we do ministry because that is what is going to show the power of god to the people got it so 
anointing whenever we say anointing there are two categories john already said the anointing he dwells in you he will teach you all things that is for every born again believer but the anointing on us is what we need for ministry and that's what we are going to discuss about okay i hope there's no confusion it's quite clear right okay wonderful so let's move on so what are some points that we can uh, understand about the anointing see firstly uh, the power and the presence of the holy spirit okay which is released through our lives is usually associated with the grace and the gift of god upon our lives because now we are asking the question okay god gives all of us that empowering to walk in the supernatural how do i manage you no know, how do i make more of it happen so here is the key what is the grace and the gift of god on our lives we need to identify that now when i'm moving in that area there will be anointing if i'm trying to move in a different area i may not have much anointing okay so that is a key so always try to step into that area of gifting and grace so that we see more power uh let's quickly read from ephesians chapter 3 and verse 7 ephesians chapter 3 verse 7 of which i became a minister according to the gift of the grace of god given to me by the effective working of his power yeah so he paul says he became a minister of the grace and the gift which was given to him and then he also talks about the effective working of the power of god so the the gifting of god it's like a channel or a conduit or you know we can imagine we always um, consider um, let let's say if we are watering the plants you know if you use a small pipe then you have less water coming through but if you use a, the right pipe of the right width more water will come through it so it's somewhat similar so when we have when we are stepping into the right gift um, the power of god is demonstrated wonderfully whereas if i try to move with the with maybe a gift which that's not meant for me then uh, i might not see that you know so called anointing because it's not aligned to the gift that i'm trying to move in or practice in so being conscious of um, uh, the grace of god what is the grace of god on my life uh, what are, what are the giftings of god on my life being conscious of that really helps okay and uh, uh, and how to identify like what is the grace of god or what is the gift of god on our, on us yeah they are different so grace is the empowering okay the empowering gift is more of the ability the gift is different in different ways grace is also depends on you like i mean i mean grace is same but hmm yeah yeah correct 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 yeah so it will be given and it will be given uh huh yeah how how grace works yeah sure see the word grace no it has lot of uh, meanings uh, anand so i think you're looking at grace as um, um like the grace of god in that context you're looking at it right so we all have the same grace yeah yeah so but i am talking about um, grace as an empowering so the context changes so grace as an empowering means uh, see you i have for example uh, somebody may have the grace to preach whereas they don't have the grace to to lead worship okay so that's the grace that i am talking about right now it's not the saving grace there are many different kinds which one 
Yeah, it's a gift also, but there is an empowering that comes from God also. So we say according to the grace that was given to me, meaning that what what is that grace which was given? It is it is um, an enabling that was given to Paul to be a minister of the gospel. So like that, when we say you have a grace to be a good teacher of the word, you have an empowering by the Holy Spirit to do that. Whereas I may not have it. I may have the grace for something else. But the key to flowing in the anointing is be in the area of your grace. Be in the area of your gifting. Yeah. So that's my question. How do we identify it? How do we identify what is our, the grace of God or the gift of God? Mike uh, Anand. Just ask God. I mean, will practically if we see also, we'll easily yes. know. Okay. See if 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 I, if I can sing or if I can worship, if yeah. I can preach, that we'll easily know. Day by I mean, when we are going through, I mean, when we are preaching or when we are singing, yes, we can easily identify what the gift we have from God mm. and the uh, abilities. Correct. Correct. So based on see, it, I think it depends on whether or not we are stepping out. Only when we step out, uh, we may recognize, again, it may not be all that easy. We may have to do certain things a couple of times. Maybe we fail at it and all. Trial and error. And that way we, we figure it out. Okay, this is the area of my gifting. Uh, this is the area of my grace. And uh, we function more in that. Okay. Uh, yeah, but if we don't take the courage to try then we won't know. So a lot of believers, what happens? We keep saying anointing, anointing, anointing. See, it's the empowering of the spirit to do something, right? Uh, but we, we ask God, give me more anointing. But we are not functioning. See, anointing is, it needs to flow through. It has to flow through and do the work. Now, it cannot flow through unless we are, we are willing to step out. Uh, in the grace, in the gifting that God has for us, then it will flow. But give me more, give me more, give me more. Okay, we keep everything. Ah, I have lots of anointing. It doesn't make sense. That anointing is supposed to flow through the gifts and all and bless people. So to identify what is my gifting is uh, so important. Okay, uh, so how would we know? First is step out, uh, try different things as the Lord gives the opportunity. Then um, uh, we'll begin to see that uh, there is some special um, grace when we are doing that particular task. Okay, uh, like maybe, you know, some of us are so good at managing things. Some of us are so good at media. Some of us are so good at worship. I remember one girl, she used to sing um, in North Church some time ago. And uh, every time she sings, right, it'll be like you, you're you literally sensing the presence of God. It was more than her singing. She should just open her mouth and everyone's entering into the presence of God. And uh, people... I, I remember some friends of mine would be like, oh, is she singing? I want to come. Because there's there's a special grace, there's an anointing in what was going on, right? The power of power and the presence of the spirit was very much in that. So it's like that. Then we were encouraging her. We said, hey, you shouldn't stop singing. There's something so special about the way you sing. It's more than your singing. It's got to do with the presence of the Holy Spirit. So in this way, we identify Okay, and the next thing is uh, the the happy part is that we can grow in the grace, to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul uh, Peter says that in his epistle. So we can keep growing in the grace. So how to grow in the grace? Okay, we ask God. God give me grace. Exercise. Yeah. Main thing is when we keep using what we have, it increases. But when we don't use what we have, you know, even gifts are like that. The more operational they are, uh, the, the stronger they get. But when we don't use them, then they become, they remain weak. 
so use them more that's one of the keys to grow in the grace and uh, um, humility uh, even pastor was sharing that i think you know james chapter 4 verse 6 god gives more grace to the humble so uh, when we walk in that attitude of humility grace will increase and you'll be like wow how how is the opportunity increasing the ability increasing because we are we are walking in the that right attitude before god you know and exalting god being right before god um, and grace will increase so these are the questions that ministers of god ask how to increase my anointing and here are the answers identify the grace identify the gift cause the grace to grow how to make the grace grow ask god first of all practice the uh, you know whatever god is calling you to do practice it more and more and walk in humility so this way it will start to increase and therefore the anointing also will grow yes like uh, what what you are what you are telling is fine yeah and the other context yes. see uh, i can i can preach very well but i am a beginner in worshiping okay okay then uh, is there a possibility can i ask god and receive and then i'll be uh, i'll be using that as my another gift like mm. i wanted to be to worship god also on mm. the same when i'm preaching i wanted to worship god but i am in a beginning stage so is there a person so god gifted me with the preaching mm. is there a possibility that i can ask god for the anointing or grace uh, for me to sing or worship and can be and can be used mm. for the glory of god yeah so we can ask god for uh, any uh, ability that you know we want uh, but we'll have to see anand because usually god wires us a certain way okay so i may have the desire to do something but i may not have the grace of god to do it at the level that i want to do it at so uh, again it takes humility because then we'll have to just admit that uh, yeah i can sing but that's not my main area if i sing a little it's okay let me just focus more on teaching because that's what god is asking me to do in a bigger way i may want to teach also i may want to sing also uh, but i have to go with what god is uh, doing maybe he has not given me much grace for that singing i am just able to touch the surface but i'm not able to go as deep as another person who has the grace to do it right then i have to admit that and say yes i do have these abilities but um, the ability to do one particular thing may be far greater than the ability to do something else so if that's what is in the plan of god somewhere we've got to say okay i'll make it grow to as much as it can but i'm not going to try to push this harder than what i'm supposed to go with so that that's also like yeah it's just and in if you see in bangalore or an apc uh -huh. they have a different different things like uh, worship pastor Mm. assistant pastor associate yes. pastor and there there is a separate i mean division yeah and they can they can hire a worship pastor yeah they can do that mm. but when we go to rural areas and all if one pastor is uh, is is trying to build a church he is the only preacher he is the only singer he is yeah. the only person yeah. who pray yeah so then then how about in that Mm -hmm. uh, see initially it's fine uh, because it's understandable there's only one person uh, but you see uh, hopefully the trajectory is one of growth hopefully uh, and when growth happens we need to trust god to send in the right people okay one is because it's practical one person how can they do everything for a long period of time it's not practical right like you can't be doing that second thing is we give opportunities to raise other leaders so i think it's an intentional decision that uh, leaders need to make see i'll tell you why we also have some of these rural uh, you know some churches in small towns rural places but even them we encourage them and we tell them intentionally look out for leaders 
so what they do is they also start identifying people grooming them uh, and set them as leaders of many house churches so then over a period of time even if they if we say you know they are from a rural setting they may not have money to hire you can still have a lot of leaders and share the responsibility yeah does it answer yeah Huh. Yeah. They want to do that because huh. uh, they'll take their position. They'll think like that. <laughs> and 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 if you see in most of the mega churches also in Andhra or Telangana, the 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 this mega pastors they don't give anyone a chance or they don't hire anyone. They uh, uh, either they'll only sing or else their their sons and daughters they'll only do that. and and i wonder how how come they not know all these things i mean how mm. church planting should be how mm. the things mm. have to work mm. yeah so see um if let's say the family the son the daughter uh, or the wife if they are called there is no problem you know what i mean sometimes they have the grace of god to maybe lead worship or be an associate pastor that's okay uh, but in general uh, ministry is meant to be done by a whole bunch of people like even if you look at the early church uh, yes there is a peter and a and a paul and all but when you see even paul on his missionary journey is paul is traveling with timothy and silas and luke and aquila and priscilla and you know you have all these names that come up so the right pattern is to identify people according to the gifts and the grace of god upon each one's life and all of us work together then we can build the ministry that would be the right way okay great yeah so the grace and gift yeah sure yeah yeah ask so man like i can only the rural church and urban church so yeah like uh for anointing or like uh, i felt on i went to on church like so there is what happened is like there is one pastor and one person is leading worship so in middle this pastor came and start singing mm. but it went very wrong but believers are happy with that okay believers are okay engaging with worship but uh, this case is different went very wrong mm. uh, so and one more thing is like same day only the same pastor he want to be leading in a different way like uh god uh, god is saying something something he want to share but pastor is not allowing oh. so in case anything like as that how to be uh like yeah. well, because of holy spirit is saying pastor is saying don't share now mm. Mm. yeah see um being under the leadership of the pastor is important we always say even when it comes to the exercise of uh, the gifts any of the gifts and spiritual gifts particularly for example i have a word of prophecy right and uh, i am in church uh, let's imagine i am in central church and then i get this word and i'm so like bursting i want to share it i have to check with the senior pastor i can't just go and share it like that right so all that is fine francis but if let's say the issue is the attitude of the pastor then that is uh, very tricky <laughs> because now how to address the pastor maybe after the service is over or after a couple of times that these things have happened uh, maybe some of the senior leaders can approach uh, and then uh, ask like why is this happening you know why are you not loving others so you may need to have a conversation but in the right way yeah mm. pastor only appointed this person to lead how you want yeah then pastor only came and said you sh- should not share <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah so yeah maybe maybe the see it, it it's all like how the leadership is happening okay the I- ideal way is when the person was brought in he should have been given some guidelines or some expectation so then what happens is they have a framework within which they know i can i can grow in this way uh, if i make some mistakes also it's okay 
so that is the right way of delegating okay but maybe this pastor doesn't know how to delegate is what i would uh, feel because I, on the stage if he's trying to regulate you know how the worship leader should do it how the worship leader should not do it then um this is problematic because it will create a lot of friction between uh, the pastor and the leader so yeah in team work it's a lesson <laughs> that we shouldn't do it like that yeah great thank you thank you for sharing yeah, these are all the things that happen they all go on yeah huh? these are the matters yeah very true so anyway we've identified if we want to um, see the anointing manifest then go according to the grace of god on your life okay uh, and uh, yeah it's very tempting sometimes we want to do everything you know we want to like i want to sing i want to dance i want to preach but you've got to make a choice and say okay where is the anointing where is the presence of the spirit and we we'll come to know as we are ministering like i i remember when i uh, first started sharing no uh, like you have your notes everything and then you you go preach right but as the time went on um, sometimes when i'm preaching i can feel it i am like oh my goodness i can almost sense the presence of god and the way uh, some points will come i will be like i said that <laughs> from where did that come you know and uh, there were some of my friends one particular some and they were listening and then they came and said oh that was not you i said yeah even i know <laughs> that was not me because the words are just coming so i'm kind of understanding that uh, okay god is telling me to take this seriously so i need to study more i need to invest all my time in this particular gifting because of god's grace is there in it so like that we need to like you know identify it and go now i honestly i also love a lot of other things but frankly i'm not so good at it i just have to admit no i'm not i'm not good at those things as much as i should be in order to lead with those things right so then you just let other people do it yeah so to make these choices yeah go ahead i'm like my question is like this if i know god i know into the person for on ministry mm -hmm. just example for yeah. uh, prophetic ministry okay. prophesy okay so if this person is not uh, living a uh, spiritual way like uh, not mm -hmm. praying not engaging with uh, mm -hmm. god and all but he is coming and prophesy mm -hmm. so is it from god or yeah uh, um so uh see you use the particular example of prophecy okay it's a spiritual gift now for every gift uh, there is one scripture like romans 11:29 uh, where it's talking about israel it's talking about israel and god's people and it says that even though they've gone away from god uh, god will still keep his promise to israel so in that context it says the gifts and callings of god are irrevocable meaning what god gave to israel that promise he won't take it back even though the people are uh, you know not faithful that is actually true for all the gifts and callings that god gives us so imagine i'm a prophet and my life is not right with god but god has anointed me with the gift of prophecy now the gift will function uh, francis that's the scary part the gift the genuine gift can still function but i may be living an unrighteous life you know what i mean for some period of time that may happen whereas people are noticing ah oh, no but he's pr prophesying but look at him you know people may recognize but the gift will function the gifts and callings of god are irrevocable but if uh we push it too far like if i push it too far there will come a time where i won't be able to function in the gift also that also will happen but god's grace is so much that it's a scary thought um the gift will be there for a while mm. okay yes yes go ahead carry on yeah i hear on on uh, one message like as is the, like regarding gift of god uh -huh. so if like uh, if god given a gift he won't take it back uh -huh. 
That's uh, what. So, yeah, so it is connecting with this like okay, so if that person is not doing also is not uh, yeah, living a spiritual life also he can uh, do work on that gift So yes Francis even if a person is going away from god uh, the gift can function but remember we said one more thing we said we said the exercise of the gift is also important for it to function right so in that context when you're not exercising the gift correctly it will become weak and in that way it will die down has god taken away the gift no gift is there but the person is away from god he is not exercising it so in that sense slowly it will lose its power yeah sure so yeah these are all crazy things all right so we'll move on now we've understood that um, we must identify the grace of god and uh, we must also keep growing in the grace of god that way the anointing will increase um now moving on how to make the anointing increase further uh, by the word of god the more of the word of god we have as a foundation the stronger the anointing upon our lives uh, we see when jesus spoke uh, john 663 he said my words they are spirit and they are life okay my words they are spirit they are life so the word of god um, continues to release that anointing on us and uh, the word of god is always aligned to the spirit of god um, i think we picked that scripture and saw it earlier also 1 john 5 verse 7 that the word and the spirit they are in agreement so the more of the word that we meditate on uh, we will see that the power of god is flowing easier so for example let's say um, uh, the anointing for healing we are trusting god for the anointing of healing so how should how should i increase that anointing healing anointing you just study more passages on healing you just meditate on more incidents where jesus healed people okay uh, and the more we do that we'll find that the holy spirit is able to work more powerfully in that area so the word along that aspect uh, is is something that we must meditate on i remember one incident where um, there was a, a young lady who needed um, deliverance demonic spirits and all that and uh, we had asked her to come one day as a team we wanted to minister to her and see her set free so in preparation for that uh, i was wondering like what should i do because we know on this day this time to this time we have to deal with some demons okay <laughs> so how to deal with the demons now what shall i do to prepare okay pray fast but to build up our faith through the word of god is also very key so the thing that uh, i i was told to do was take all the passages where jesus cast out a demon and start to meditate on it how did he do it what did he do he issued a command you know he said this he said that so just sat with those same passages and i was looking at each incident and by the time the day came when we had to come and minister it was just easier there was a better flow of the spirit so uh, yeah meditating on scriptures will also enable the anointing to flow better and flow more powerfully so the anointing accompanies the word and the opposite is also true less word less anointing yeah so this is how we must increase the anointing yes yes francis ma'am we can yeah. pray for any anointing we need this gift this anointing Mm. we can pray like us that is it yeah so generally 
the anointing or the grace the gifting of god is according to god's decision okay uh, like uh, you know the the great example would be of the fivefold ministry offices where um, god has selected he has given to the church you know the pastor the teacher the evangelist the prophet so we can't even like in the fivefold ministry offices it's by god's choice so let's say i want to be an apostle it doesn't work like that god selects okay similarly in our giftings uh god knows our whole life our entire life and our calling and you know our destiny so according to that he has given certain gifts so i think we need to yield to that what he wants for us now maybe some particular gifts um uh, we may have it and that is why we have the desire and that's why we are asking god for those gifts so that is okay that desire sometimes god only puts and says okay pray for this pray for these opportunities but in general god gives those uh, he decides is what i would say mm. yeah so we need to yield to his purpose okay right so we said uh, identify the calling gifting grace uh, grow in it secondly we said word of god will help the anointing increase third one is consecration consecration would mean dedicating ourselves to god uh, so obviously you know if you recall uh, th there is that uh, passage that says you know when we empty ourselves of the things of the world uh, then we will be a vessel uh, it, ready for the master's use i'll just tell us second timothy master's use 2 yeah second timothy 2 uh, verses 21 to 26 so where it says if one uh, cleanses himself he will be a vessel to honor sanctified and ready for the master's use um, prepared unto every good work it we can imagine ourselves like a vessel that god can fill with the holy spirit now how can he fill us with the holy spirit when there are things in us which are not agreeable to him so which is where dedicating ourselves or cleansing ourselves sanctifying ourselves comes into the picture so the the closer we walk with god the holier we walk with the lord um we can expect more anointing right more and more anointing um uh, because god can keep pouring more of himself there's no place in us to accommodate that anointing so purity i think is the next key that we need to pursue uh which will help us see more of the power of his spirit okay right so any any other thoughts regarding this uh -huh. but but the thing is i never read or heard like uh, the people who who has this uh, healing anointing or prophecy anointing i never heard or read like they they used to read but mm. i i i heard or read like they used to pray for hours and hours mm. for the anointing mm -hmm. maybe theologically maybe it's it's the one of the point but yeah practically mm. uh what do you think about it? yeah see the technical aspects of this right like where we are asking why exactly did the anointing increase is it the word or is it prayer um no need to become so technical about it if the person is flowing in greater anointing uh the way i would look at it is he has great faith now see faith no the word affects our faith of course faith comes by hearing word affects yeah that is there but also prayer and fasting like 
this kind will not come out except by prayer and fasting you know matthew uh, 17 so there jesus gave one more key prayer and fasting so some people though may, they may not be so educated and so strong in the word maybe they are spending a lot of time in prayer and all and that's also helping their faith become strong so that's yeah like like when he is when he, when he prepared for the sermon hmm. he used to pray for one two hours three hours and then hmm. only he'll go and preach yeah in yeah. one of the time he was sharing like uh, he prepared for the sermon he is a very good preacher and he went for a meeting mm -hmm. crusade mm -hmm. then he is in his hotel room and the time actually had came to he had to come onto the stage and preach mm -hmm. but one of the one of the young boy went uh, and went to call him he locked his door and he was shouting like god if you won't come i won't go onto the stage oh, okay. you if you come only i'll go to the why you are not he was shouting in the room oh, okay, 15 okay. minutes got late and they were singing one song in that 15 minutes mm -hmm. he preached so good mm -hmm. and then this this court convener went to that pastor and then asked he was telling like i was asking god to come with me mm -hmm. he was not replying me that's why Okay, okay, okay. So uh, these yeah. things, when my my grandfather also used to tell, when when they're working in this um, uh, mm. anointing, healing, and all, yeah. he used to because they have a very minimum knowledge about the word. Mm. But they they when I heard these testimonies and all, they're so great. He used to tell. He used to when he is going to a crusade meeting the next day. He used to pray for the whole night. Yeah, he don't used to sleep. Yeah, without yeah. prayer if he go also the the things won't happen the miracles yeah see see but something they are employing according to what the bible says prayer also increases the anointing fasting increases the anointing uh, and consecration no because in praying what are they saying they're saying god you're, we are committing ourselves to you you come you fill us so uh, all those aspects maybe they are the ones which are increasing the anointing and helping them see the miracles uh depends on the individual means that is there okay that is there but uh we cannot eliminate the word no anand yeah, yeah. It, it, it the major in the correct correct so it is it is playing uh but two things I, i'll say about your statement one is maybe some are connected stronger to god in in prayer uh, i believe that all of us can be so it doesn't depend on the individual if that's the case then there's partiality with god right like he gave special ability to some to pray well and the others they didn't so god is not partial that way so all of us can have that kind of a connect with god is one thing second thing is yes uh prayer with minimal word is working but that will not sustain sooner or later the person has to go back to the word so you can't just run the show on okay you know no word i'll just do this prayer 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 thing uh, that's that's not right that's not right hmm. yeah okay great so um yeah this is a very crucial subject uh, and um uh, I'm just thinking next week. Three. Yeah, because it, at this pace, I am not going to finish your course. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, how about next Thursday? I'll take a class. Yeah. Is that fine? Uh, I hope online students also, you're able to record and put okay no but interaction gets missed out i would just lecture and leave it so tuesday but tuesday i have another class no it, yeah 
yeah so thursday if it's okay with everyone yeah. then i will post i'll let the e learners also know so thursday what time is it 9 9 yeah. first start okay let's do it so i'll take an online class then okay great so let's close with uh, a word of prayer um, who would like to pray <laughs> dear heavenly father thank you lord thank you for the class thank you for letting us know many things lord lord help us to exercise uh, all the gifts you have given us oh lord help us to come to your word and strengthen our faith and and help us to uh, build build and develop more our abilities and gifts oh lord and thank you for nancy mom oh lord thank you for all the class students oh lord in jesus name i pray amen 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 man thank you have a supernatural day <laughs> god bless you <laughs> yeah so sure.